Today, the Israel Diamonds Institute is delighted to interview Eli Isakov, President of the World Diamond Council. Hello, Eli. Hi. You are completing over a decade of service as President of the World Diamond Council. What do you see as the highlights and the challenges of your service? First of all, it's 13 years that I've completed as uh, President of the World Diamond Council. I believe the greatest achievement has been to bring everyone together the entire industry together, and then of course bringing all the governments together and partnership with the NGO. So just the fact that we got them all together to work for one purpose was, I think, one of the greatest achievements. And then to make the decisions to have a certification system in place, that took three years to negotiate. We in the diamond industry had it all up in a couple of months, but then we had to bring all the governments along. And that was a monumental effort, and we did it. You've been with the WDC since its inception. Do you think that the organization has achieved its goals? Uh, yes, indeed. I believe that uh, the goal was to uh, eliminate conflict on uh, diamonds from coming into the legitimate market. And virtually today, all diamonds that come into the markets are conflict-free. And if that was the goal, we have achieved that. What issues are on the agenda at this year's World Diamond Council meeting? We have uh, two uh, challenges, actually. Uh, one is to reforms in the World Diamond Council, and then reforms in the Kimberley process. And hopefully, we will get there in both uh, instances, uh, at the World Diamond Council and later on uh, in the intercessional in Kimberley, South Africa. Do you think that the WDC can or should adapt its mandate and tackle a wider array of issues in the future? This is uh, something that the industry itself has to come to an agreement on. Uh, there are two school of thoughts on that. Uh, some people would want to narrow it and keep it exactly to what we were doing up to now. There are some who want to widen the scope of the World Diamond Council. And uh, both arguments are legitimate. And uh, I, it's not going to be done in my tenure. Uh, probably it's going to be left for the future if the industry would want to widen the scope of the World Diamond Council. Can you tell us about the planned reforms of the WDC? Yes, indeed. Uh, we have uh, a few uh, reforms in mind that I'm looking forward to have them approved in this uh, plenary that's coming up in Tel Aviv. Uh, first and foremost is membership. Uh, up to now, we had membership that was not a paid membership. We had contributions to uh, the WDC from people who were willing to contribute. Uh, we want to do it a mandatory membership, a mandatory payment that anybody who's a member will pay. Uh, putting together a, a budget to enable the WDC to become more professional, to hire an executive director, and separate the office uh, that exists now where I serve as president and CEO to have an executive director or CEO in place that is professional, and a chairman uh, that will oversee the overall operation of the board of directors and the WDC, but have a professional person in place. We are looking to uh, have a rotating uh, leadership uh, role where a chairman will uh, change every two years and come from a different sector giving a wider uh, participation and representation in the leadership role of the World Diamond Council. And um, the decision-making processes to have them in a, such a way that they're more streamlined, have a, a little smaller board, and make the whole uh, organization entirely professional. Can you tell us a little about your plans for the future? June 30th, I will move on as from the presidency of the World Diamond Council. 
uh, I do have still a lot left in me and I intend to uh, stay uh, in the politics of the world diamond business. And when the time will come, I will announce what are my plans. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you.